I love this forest with the white bark. It's kind of nice being in a uh, campground, having a nice manicured uh, trail to walk on. Uh, and the mosquitoes aren't bad. Uh, mosquitoes don't really bite me anyway. And um, in, if they do, I don't react. I don't get all itchy and everything. So uh, there's been mosquitoes inside the rig and they land on me, but they're, they're not that bad. Uh, so for me that I don't get bit, but also they're, they're just giant. There's not a million of them. It seems like they don't swarm you. You might just have like 10 giant ones and they're easy to kill. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So this is my morning walk before I go into Fairbanks. I'm just getting my workout in and then I'm going to go spend the morning in Fairbanks. Wildfires have occurred extensively throughout the Tanana Valley. The succession that follows a burn depends on many factors, including topography, the intensity of the burn, the previous vegetation, and the kinds of seeds available afterwards. In general, burned areas are invaded first by grasses and fireweed, followed by a shrub stage of primarily willows. Paper birch often invades the willows in flat areas, forming pure stands or mixing with spruce or aspen. White or black spruce eventually replaces the birch. Judging by the age of the larger birches and the, and the presence of a few old charred stumps, this area seems to have burned about 60 or 65 years ago. The tall willows you see here are mature and are slowly being replaced by birch. Oh, wow. Closer to the river, where the birch is well established in pure stands, you can see the many dead and decaying trunks of willows from an earlier successional stage. So plays an important role for moose in Alaska because willows, their preferred food, grow abundantly in burned areas. In winter, moose seek the young twigs uh, and winter buds, which they obtain by breaking the lower stems and branches. The many broken branches halfway up these willows are evidence of moose browsing in winter and past winters. Eventually, some, willow, some species of willow mature and die out, while others grow beyond the reach of moose, but they are still important as cover. The area is used extensively by moose. Look for their tracks on the path. They should have a picture here of moose poop. <laughs> really, I just passed a big pile of something. Must have been moose poop. So. The coniferous tree with clustered needles and small scattered scones are tamarack, larch. They are unique because they are also deciduous. Wow! The needles turn yellow and drop off in the fall. Tamarack is the only deciduous conifer in Alaska. Tamaracks prefer wet soils in which to grow and are closely associated with black spruce and permafrost. Oh my god! <laughs> The low growing shrubs in this area, Labrador tea, that's so funny. When I walked through here yesterday, I was like, I smell tea. Bog blueberry, mountain cranberry, and willows. Deep in the moss, you can see a green leathery looking plant, which is a folios lichen. A lichen is actually two plants, a fungus and an al alga, growing together. Other li lichens, 
I think it's lichens, uh, form crusty patches on rocks or hang like beards from trees. The thick sphagnum <laughs> moss helps insulate the ground from the sun's warmth. If removed, the ground will thaw to a greater depth in summer. Construction is hazardous in permafrost areas because the exposed soil may thaw and slump. Sprouting tamarack cones, tamarack tree, tamarack needles. So I'm not sure which one here is tamarack. Boy, I hope I'm here in the fall though to see some of this. hike on a beautiful nature trail here in Chena Lake Recreation Area. It's an Army Corps of Engineers camp just outside of Fairbanks. Uh, enjoyed my stay here, an overnight stay. It was 20 bucks, no hookups or anything like that, but uh, beautiful scenery as you can see. And uh, so now I'm just going to go get cleaned up and head into Fairbanks for some sightseeing and errands and all kinds of fun. I'm going to go to, uh, so a couple viewers wrote to me and suggested some things to see in Fairbanks. And so I'm going to go to, I think it's the Pioneer, Pioneer Park. I think I'm going to go to the Salmon Bake. I'm just going to check it out. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. At first I was gonna, I was like, I'm traveling, you know, and I have to have some fresh, um, uh, Alaskan fish. And then I started thinking about the fish, you know, being yanked from the ocean and onto a plate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm also going to be getting my mail. I had my mail sent uh, by general delivery to the post office. And just so those of you who don't know, you can have your mail forwarded to you to almost any, any post office in the country. Call ahead of time to make sure they receive uh, general delivery mail and ask if there are any uh, special requirements. Some post offices uh, have different requirements. They're usually pretty standard, but it's always good to call just in case. And in this case, all they had to do was send it to me, care of general delivery, Fairbanks, Alaska, and the zip code no address or anything and so I'm gonna go pick up my mail today hopefully all my mail is there and um, because I do have mail forwarders there's videos on that uh, here check up here for the videos on that I'm not gonna get into that right now and what else am I gonna do I'm gonna do some shopping there's a Fred Meyer so I'm looking forward to stocking up on some groceries I don't know when I'm gonna be making it to Anchorage because my next stop is Denali I have a reservation in Denali for four nights I'm excited about that in just a few days actually mm about a week. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about going and checking out Fairbanks today. This, uh, this campground just outside of Fairbanks is really nice. Although I, I kind of kept pushing my luck getting here, hoping that I'd be able to find something for free. And as I suspected, the closer I got to Fairbanks, the more populated and the harder it was to find anything, bo any boondocking. And uh, I passed up a couple state parks for $18 a night with water for this, which was $20 a night. And it's the uh, Chena Lake Recreation Area. Um, and I'm, th there's water pumps. Here, you want to take a look? But they don't, I mean, there's water things and they say water, but they don't appear to be working. So... Um, there's two sections to this campground. There's a lake section and a river section. And I came down to the river section because I figured the lake section would probably be more populated. And I was right. Actually, when I got here last night, I was the only one here. Um, there's two loops here and I was the only one here. And these guys pulled in. <laughs> right next to me. I don't know. With little itty bitties that I heard screaming all night. <laughs> I don't understand it. Everybody's different. I don't own the place. 
They have every right to camp wherever they want. Oh. Whoa. So anyway, this is what the water thing looks like. Um, even if I could figure out how water comes out, there is nothing to hook my hose up to. And, um, yeah, so I'm not really sure. I'm going to go on my way out. I will go through the lake uh, area. I might come back here. Uh, it's, what am I? I think the guy at the gate said about 20 minutes from Fairbanks. I might end up here. I might end up at Walmart. I might end up somewhere else. I'm not really sure. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to get out of here. It's like afternoon because my sleeping patterns are way, way, way off. I didn't get up to like quarter to 10 today. And I think that's because I'm having a hard time falling asleep at night. Uh, I probably didn't get to sleep till after midnight last night, last night. And I'm noticing just my chain, my, uh, sleeping patterns are changing, uh, and I guess I just have to go with that. I used to try to go to bed at 9 o'clock and get up at my normal 6.30, 7 o'clock, and that's not working. So if I'm up until 12, 12.30 at night, reading, working, whatever, so be it. And then, um, you know, just start my day a little bit later. But I, And I tried to tell myself this morning, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not like I like have to be anywhere at any certain time. So it doesn't really matter. I just have to get used to waking up at 10 and saying, okay, it's not 10, it's 8. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And, um, but I do want to get into town and get some errands done and, and have some fun and take you with me. All right, you ready to go see Fairbanks? It's going to be fun. Come on, let's go. Puppy. Where are you, puppy? Oops. Need to pick that up at Fred Myers today. Uh, where are you? Hi. You want to go? <laughs> you want to go? Hi, puppy. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. Okay, let's go to Fairbanks. I'm hating this. <laughs> I have driven what, a couple thousand miles on two lane roads <laughs> and to be back on a four lane divided highway is, is, uh, I don't know. I really liked, I really liked the remoteness, but of course I'm getting close to Fairbanks, but, uh, and I'm a little torn about how much time I want to spend in Fairbanks, but I feel like I should show you guys around. Yay. Well, first errand done. It's always such a relief when that works. <laughs> Especially in this case, there was some important stuff in there. Hi, what should we do next? I'm hungry. I wonder if there's a vegetarian restaurant. lunch so I'm gonna go go for a little walk I have my buddy with me he's on his way <laughs> and I think I'm gonna walk over the bridge if I can if there's a path and just go look around downtown got an invitation from one of the uh, the waitresses at the cafe she's in a performance tonight at Pioneer Park and she's inviting everybody you know uh, to go it's a uh, historical it's funny it's a play so I might go do that tonight I can't remember what time she said but uh, Pioneer Park is something I'm gonna explore anyway. Uh, yeah, so let's just go look around. What do you say?
came up here to get out of the rain. George Thomas Memorial Library. This site possesses national significance. That is gorgeous. Look at that. You see that? The walls, they're probably that metal stuff, right? This is really beautiful. Wow. <laughs> oh, it smells so good, puppy dog. <laughs> What's so interesting in there? Fake sushi, it's artificial crab. It's called the um, Alaskan roll because it has extra crab more than the California roll and extra wasabi. And I got it from there. The Ala and I got it from there, from the Alaskan kitchen. 
just waiting for the theater to open. I want to go see that show, and it's about an hour. Alaska. Woohoo! How about you folks? Any chance some of you are from Alaska? <laughs> we have a tradition here at the palace. We'd like you to link up our person sitting on your left and on your right. Go ahead and link them up. Even if you don't know the person sitting next to you, even if you don't like the person sitting next to you. <laughs> and now we're going to sway back and forth. performance about the history of Fairbanks. That was so much fun. I'm really glad I happened to just stumble upon that um, because the waitress at the lunch place told me about it. She was awesome. It was a lot of fun. I got to thank her afterwards. So hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was fun. <laughs>